Alright, so boom, check it. Now ain't that how every great story started out? Now why would mine be any different? These are the Chronicles of Mike Murphy. These are the Chronicles of Mike Murphy with your narrator, comedian Mike Murphy. So I'm going to take y'all back to 2004, about July. Now, I'm stationed in Fort Hood, Texas, and i um, 20 at the time. Now, I had just been in a two-year relationship with my girlfriend, and we had broke up. Now, here's the caveat, right? In that two years, I was faithful for 16 months without no buns because I was either in Iraq or in Texas, and my girlfriend was back home. So I was sex-deprived for mad long. And then I did all that, and when I come home, me and Shorty end up breaking up. So I wasn't really feeling that at all. But I did, I was used to having a girlfriend, someone to talk to, you know. So I was trying to fill that void. And my roommate in the barracks, my man Z from um, from Brooklyn, he had a girlfriend, and her roommate in, her, in their barracks was fine as hell. And so I'm like, yo, bro, plug, tell your, your girl to plug me in with her roommate. So they make the connection. I get her number. The first night we talked, we on the phone for like six hours, some high school shit. We hitting it off crazy. And come to find out, Shorty from Pittsburgh, just like me. I'm thinking she's spinning me. I'm like, you ain't from Pittsburgh. She's like, yeah, I'm from Bell Suver. I'm like, oh, I'm from Garfield. She's like, that's crazy. So we, we boom, we hit it off right away. I'm like, oh, this is it. Like, I'm, I'm not even thinking about my ex no more. Cause I'm thinking I struck gold with this joint. She fired too. Model built, you know what I'm saying? She, she my type. So we kicking it every day. Like a week then went past, and I'm trying to hit now. You know what I'm saying? Now, nowadays, that's not, if I've been talking to somebody for a week, that ain't nothing. But when you young, you trying to crack first night type shit. You know what I mean? So a week for me is like, hey, you on the clock, shorty. What we doing? But I didn't have the game I got now to, to smooth talking and get into it the way I wanted to. So I'm doing it like the young version. So one day we chilling in our barracks and I'm like, yeah, what's the, what's the craziest thing you ever did sexually? Like, what's your wildest story? And she's like, oh, I made a sex tape with my, my ex-boyfriend. I'm like, damn, you let homie keep it? I know he don't got the tape because I didn't have women. Maybe nowadays you might be able to keep it. But back then women was not letting you keep it. It was either getting deleted or they was keeping it. So I figured she either deleted it or she had it. But I hit her with the damn, you let him keep it? She's like, hell no, I still got it. I'm like... Say sort of God. She's like, I sort of God I do. I'm like, can I see it? She's like, I mean, sure, why not? I'm like, oh, bet. I'm just trying to see her naked. Now, in my mind, I don't have no, no, I'm not planning on cuffing her, wifing her, none of that stuff. I'm just kicking it with somebody, just trying to have fun. I just got out of a relationship. I'm not trying to rush back into another one. So she goes into her closet in the barracks, pulls out the little handy cam. Told you, it's like, oh, four. So ain't no smartphones or nothing like that. It's a camcorder. Now, it ain't like the camcorder in the last video that I tell you about my mom had, the big on the shoulder dip, but it's a handy cam with the little playback screen. So she pulls it out. She's fiddling with it, gets to it. You know, boom, she shows it to me. We watching it. Now, it's kind of boring. It's even more boring than the Kim K joint. He just on top. They doing missionaries. She ain't really making no noises. He ain't really making no noises. It's kind of whack. He ain't really seeing that. The only thing I got out of it was after they got done, he kind of like rolled over. She got up to shut the tape off and I could see her, her chest. I was like, damn, that looked good. Like, that's what I wanted to see anyways because I, I like boobs over butts. Judge me. You know, don't judge me. Judge your mom. So I'm looking like, okay, that was a good at least. She closes it back up, puts it in the closet. Cool, whatever. We kicking it, talking or whatever. So now we, we end up having sex that night too. And it was good. It was fire, right? And then we had sex damn near every day at this point. So weeks and weeks go by. And one day she's at a dentist appointment. And I'm in her room while she's at the dentist appointment just watching TV. Now, my mind be drifting off. Like, I don't know if it's ADHD. I don't know what it is. I'm the type of dude that I'll be laying down to go to bed and be like, damn, where's my social security card at? I see memes about that all the time. But that's true. Like, that's how my brain works. Think about the most random shit for no reason out the blue and then start wondering. Then I'd be in a rabbit hole on the internet looking up stuff, right? So I'm sitting there watching TV and something pops in my head like, what was she doing with the camcorder before she got to that actual footage where she showed me? Because what she showed me wasn't like the camera being set up or nothing. It was just them already having sex. So I get curious. I'm like, fuck it. I got some time. I go in the closet, get the camcorder. I rewind that shit all the way back to the beginning. I hit play. When I hit play, it's her and her girls like, we about to go out pre-gaming. Yes, bitch. They doing all that shit. They taking shots or whatever. You know, this is 
21 year old, 20 year old shit that they're doing. And that's what she recorded first, but then it cuts. Like you could re- used to be able to record over tapes. Like you could just keep re-recording over them. So it cuts to this where she set the camera up and she gets in the bed. And I don't know where dude is at at the moment. He's not in the, in the screen. So I guess he comes from like behind the camera and walks in and you could just see like the top of his ass paws, like in his lower back. And she's saying something to him, but you can't really make it out. And I'm assuming she said like adjust the camera or whatever. So he kind of turns around. He's adjusting it, whatever. You still can't really see much. And then he stepped back. My man had the third leg, the baby leg, dog. I was mad as f- this nigga shit looked like my whole forearm. I was like, hey, yo. Now I'm thinking about all the times I'm cracking her. She moaning all out like, oh, go slow. Oh, don't, don't, don't be so hard. I'm thinking like, you fucking him. You can take this. Fuck is wrong with you. I'm immediately insecure because this dude, it's not even like, oh, he's just bigger than me. He is abnormal. Like it looked like his joint got a tumor. Pause. This shit's crazy. But I'm just painting the picture for y'all so y'all could go through what I went through. This shit was crazy. I seen that and was like, ain't no fucking way. So now I finished watching it. He's drilling her. She's moaning and shit, pushing him back, all that. She didn't show me that part of it. I think the part she showed me, he was already coming down from the, he probably already busted. Now he's like halfway soft, so it ain't really doing no damage. Because she wasn't making no noise when I watched the flick. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. But now I can't say nothing to her because really low key, I shouldn't have been snooping. That's like going through her phone. So I'm dead wrong and I'm, I'm kind of a hoe for it. So I can't say nothing, but I'm insecure in the relationship because I know I ain't got what he got. Pause. So from now on, every time we have sex, it's like she moaning and screaming. I'm like, man, she fronting, dog. Like, this is some bullshit. I'm in my own head. I can't even stay focused. My confidence out the window. I ain't got nothing left in the tank, dog. And again, I'm not thinking like I ain't wifing her or nothing. So whatever. Once we break up, I don't have to worry about this no more. Well, we end up getting married. So now I forever got the image of my wife till death do us part getting plowed by Mr. Marcus or, you know what I'm saying, Wesley Pipes in my head. I can't change that. So one day we get in an argument and I'm like, yo, why you ain't telling me about the tape? That nigga did it. <laughs> like, I just, I just give up the tape because I'm angry. She's like, what the fuck was you doing snooping? She basically make me feel like a, like a hoe, like I should have been for, for even doing it and for bringing it up. But now we under, now there's that awkwardness in a relationship because she knows I know, I know she knows so now when we have sex, it's just like, let me just bust and get out of here because I know I ain't doing nothing to you. You know what I mean? No confidence, like I said. So eventually, I could tell the relationship started to come to an end. I knew the marriage was going to... Divorce was very prominent. So this is about two or three weeks before I'm going to Iraq the second time, and she just got home from Iraq. Me and her getting to arguing, I'm like, yo, you're not going to the club. She's like, yes, I am. I stole her keys and tried to hide them, right? I hid them shits with my keys somewhere. I thought she would never find them. I'm downstairs watching TV. So you, you, you got my keys? I'm like, why would I have your keys? Right? I'm laughing about it. Like 10 minutes later, she comes down the steps like, all right, I'll be back. I'm like, okay. But I'm ahead of thinking like, damn, she found the keys. So now she hides my keys <laughs> because she knows what I did. So I can't go chase her because I don't got no keys. So it took me like 20 minutes to find my keys. I finally get them. I get dressed. I'm up there like I got I got the taste of blood in my mouth. I'm going to the club like now I'm going to go find my wife. I'm not playing. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is shit I would never do now because if I feel like you playing me, I'm just out. I'm I'm sparing myself the, the self deprivation. Like I'm not doing that. Like if you don't want me, you don't want me, bitch. I'm not chasing you. I go to the club and when I walk in, I see her dirty wine and grinding all on the nigga from the tape. Now I'm going to bring it back full circle. The, when I met her, she was kind of depressed a little bit because that dude had kind of cheated on her and he got sent to Iraq. So when I, the version of her I'm meeting is the depressed version. When homie come back and she get her mental health together, she low-key a hoe. She out in the club and all that. Like, I'm seeing a whole different version of her. Like, yo, who is this chick in front of me? But dude is back from Iraq now. She meet him at the club. She all on him grinding. And I see the video in my head again like, hey, yo. Immediately, I'm like, yo, this marriage is over. I already know it is because son is back. You know what I'm saying? Daddy long leg or pause is back in the picture. It's a wrap for the kid. You know what I'm saying? Sort of go off. Shortly after that, I go to Iraq. I get a call. Yeah, I'm moving on. I'm getting back with homie because we're getting a divorce when you come home. <laughs> I ain't going to lie and say I wasn't hurt. I was. 
because it was like, I thought that's who I was supposed to be with forever. But the, the reality set in that this was bound to happen or whatever. So I ended up losing my shorty t- to porno cause. And then he ended up leaving her. He wasn't even staying with her. So it was like, okay, cool. You got played too. But um, yeah, fellas, don't ever go through the phone. Don't go looking because you might find what you're looking for. And then your heart going to be broken to a million pieces. Take my advice. Do not go through the phone. Do not ask questions that you don't want the answers to. Um, so until next time, man, these are the Chronicles of Mike Murphy.